Hello, welcome back for another reflection on mental health. My name is Rob McFadden. I'm a psychiatrist in Center City, Philadelphia. I received some requests to discuss a non-COVID topic today. So I'd like to talk about accuracy in mental health diagnosis. Why? I think that knowing about the diagnostic process can help you have confidence that you and your doctor or therapist have a solid foundation to work on. My discussion will be specifically about diagnosis in outpatient clinics and offices. I found many articles for the most common misdiagnoses in mental health with simple Google and Google Scholar searches. Overall, the most frequently cited missed diagnosis on the 25 or so sites I looked at were ADHD, bipolar disorder, substance use, PTSD, and personality disorders. On my end, I've noticed four common errors that uh, practitioners make in mental health diagnosis. I made a little chart for it. Uh, first is something that happens to some extent even before the diagnosing begins. A provider gets stuck in a rut. Um, I, I think a story would be most illustrative of this. I, I had the uh, opportunity, while it was a sad situation, I had the opportunity to take on uh, about 20, 25 patients from a practitioner that was no longer able to um, practice about seven years ago. Uh, all of the people who ended up following up with me from that doctor had the same diagnosis and not uh, necessarily a common one. Um, also striking was the fact that the people generally had the same treatment plans, the same two or three medications were being used for each. Um, my take on that uh, and my take on some other people that I've coordinated with is that sometimes, for some reason, practitioners can get stuck in a rut of diagnosing the same thing, kind of seeing the same thing over and over um, in clinical practice. I think some reasons for that can be that a particular diagnosis has a meaning to the practitioner themselves or that they've been um, uh, knowingly or unknowingly marketed, perhaps by uh, the pharmaceutical industry, to look for something uh, specific and start overseeing it. So that's something that kind of starts before the person's even in the office. Um, second, a couple of details don't fit and get ignored or forgotten. What do I mean by this? Um, a practitioner can want to create one diagnosis that kind of explains everything, and that's uh, called reductionistic thinking, right? Everything that you uh, present to the doctor, they can kind of um, come down to one reason to explain it. Um, House, the popular TV show, was uh, a not, <laughs> not totally clinical, but off, often comical and sometimes clinical way to present that kind of thinking. Um, when, uh, when a couple of details don't fit in and, and kind of get pushed aside or ignored just so that the diagnosis can explain everything else, I think that's one of the places that misdiagnosis can occur. Um, I read an article, a Catherine story called A Correct Diagnosis in the Personal Stories section on the NAMI website that also uh, suggested that was her experience. Um, third, the ailment gets broken down into several problems instead of the practitioner looking at the overall big picture. Um, the reason I have this on opposite sides of the bell curve here is I think that uh, when a couple of things are left out, to make a single diagnosis fit. That's where you get misdiagnosis on the tail end here. These are the generally uh, functional diagnoses. And then over here, 
is when too many diagnoses occur to try to explain everything without looking at the big picture. That's why I have them on opposite sides of the scale. In psychiatry, I think this happens when the focus is on too many quantitative measures and not enough focus on development, environment, and identity. And then fourth, something that kind of happens after the assessment, associated physiologic symptoms are not investigated with physical exam, blood work, or a checkup by a primary care doctor. Sometimes uh, it's either not investigated, uh, not stressed how important that is for follow-up, and potential uh, medical or non-mental health diagnoses um, get lost that uh, would explain uh, the mental health symptoms a person's experiencing. Um, thyroid disorders are a common um, source of this particular form of misdiagnosis. Okay, so um, how do I try to be accurate in diagnosis? Um, I use some quantitative measures with all of my people, um, but I also complete what I hope is a uh, well-rounded biopsychosocial assessment. I make diagnosis an ongoing diagno uh, discussion, excuse me, so I don't miss anything the patient is concerned about. And that also gives the patient the opportunity to bring up data that may have initially been too difficult um, to discuss at first or that they hadn't initially considered. I review the results, taking into account that suboptimal response to a treatment plan may be because of an inaccurate diagnosis. And I keep an ongoing functional formulation. This allows both parties to add data and refine the diagnosis, even if the treatment is going well. And sixth, I uh, take the continuing medical education very seriously and keep up with um, understanding what current diagnostics are in, uh, in mental health. Okay, um, I hope you found that helpful. I'm going to cite um, Catherine's story uh, in the mm, summary section below. If you have any um, topics that you're interested in, you could uh, leave that as a comment. Um, stay safe, keep following uh, social distancing, droplet precautions, uh, hand washing, and uh, keep smiling.